yetu kwa roho zetu imeandaliwa mahali hapa ili neno linapokuja isikue msaada hiyo maroho yote nimeishika mateka nimejangamiza na moto wa roho takatifu na ninaachilia roho takatifu ukandene na maisha yetu tunakushukuru bwana kwa sababu ya siku ya leo katika jina la baba na la mwana na roho takatifu tumeomba na tumeamini amen so tuka tumesimama ningetaka tukapigie bwana makofi tunapo kukaribisha Bwana asifiwe. Mwanani yagosho. Ah, tunashukuru Bwana asubuhi ya leo. Tunashukuri aga igado mudanya wa umuthi sababu ya wakati na muda huu. Hiyo ndio ahida lile. Ah, nafikiri tukieti kwanza wishi tatu ikare the hanini. Ah, ndio tufanye introduction kidogo. Nikaenda tuweke introduction hanini kwa wale wageni. Kwa wale ageni wajuguna. Nitaka kujuguna. Nimeokoka. Ni honokete. Yesu ni Bwana. Yesu ni mwadhani. Na Yesu ni mfalme. Na Yesu ni atogore ni atoguretie katika maisha yangu. Mtulele wako. Namshukuru Bwana. Namshukuria gado. Hata kwa nafasi hii. Ondo hii dalili. Nataka kumshukuru my bishop. Ndio kushukuria gado bishofu. Huyu is also my spiritual father. Ambaye ni baba wangu wa kiroho. Number 1 kunipatia nafasi kusimama kwa madhabahu ambaye ame raise for our God. Ah kuheida kuruga makigogona ni geke abala dai dia gai. Because I know it is not my right. Kwa sababu najua sio haki yangu. It is a privilege kusimama kwa haya madhabahu. Ni nafasi kuu kusimama katika madhabahu. Kwa hivyo namshukuru. Namshukuria gado. Number 2 I also want to appreciate. Kaeri ni kushukuria gado. Uh, wale wengine sababu i may not be the most qualified na no groti ni thomete muno menyete muno before you eh kuruga mabere anyu lakini nitasimama sababu ya neema no ni guru kama ni ndo wawega bwana atukuzwe mwadhani yagosho so nataka nichukue nafasi hii gwe hii dalili uh, ni mu invite mke wangu ete mutumia wake akuje asalimie kanisa nigeza ageithie kanitha harafu nitawaambia vile tutaendelea na ni gumu ile ndo tuko dina mbere tugaidie Bwana Yesu asifiwe Mwanani agosho Haleluya Haleluya Mimi naitwa Lilian Nataka Lilian Nimeokoka Yesu ni Bwana Nihonoketa Yesu ni mwadhani Ndina furaha kuwa ndani ya kanisa la Bwana asubuhi ya leo Nigenete kukoro nyumba ine ya Gairushi ni roho muthi Na kuwa mrithi wa ufalme wa Mungu pamoja na Kristo Yesu Na demugai hapo na Yesu Kristo Kwa hivyo roho yangu inabubujika nikijua ya kwamba Roho yako ni kenete gemenya Uh, mimi sitembei duniani nikiwa peke yangu Diviaga dideniki Niko na mmoja ambaye amenishika mkono Dino lia unyitete guoko Na ambaye ameahidi atatembea pamoja nami mpaka ukamilifu wa dahari Na aje liri ya gotorana na niginya muisho Kwa hivyo ninafurahia bwana asubuhi ya leo Onege na ile gai mwenda nya uomuthi Biblia katika uh, first uh, okay second kings chapter 13 and verse 4 Andamoki wa kele 13 inya The Bible says that uh, and Jehoash Bimeoga na Jehoash pleaded with the Lord akalilia Mungu and the Lord listened to him na Mungu akamsikiliza for he saw the oppression of Israel kwa sababu aliona mateso ya Waisraeli because the king of Israel of, of Syria kwa sababu mfalme wa Syria oppressed them aliwafinyilia Bwana Yesu asifiwe Mwana ni agosho Ah uh, huyu ni mfalme alikuwa wa Israeli Wewe ni mudhamaki wa Israeli na Biblia inasema kwamba ali, aliona na maandiko makauga kiona Ukisoma NIV nasema he saw the oppression oppression of Israel akiona kuhinyiliyo kwa Israeli by the Syrians na Assyria Kwa hivyo alikuwa amekaa lakini wakati mmoja Mungu akamfungua macho na akaona Mudhonyo mwa gai yake huyu na maidho akiona Arafu uh, akaomba na akihoya na Mungu akamsikia na gai yake muigua na hakuomba kwa sababu uh, alikuwa na shida katika jamii yake na do ile todo ena thina muturideini wake na aliona shida ya nchi yao no oni le thina wa bururi wao na yeye akaomba na akihoya na Mungu akamsikia na gai yake muigua kwa hivyo hata nasi wakati kama huu wewe ona hiyo hida tariri tukiona shida ambazo tunapitia katika nchi yetu tuona madhina mnatoa hetukira bururi ni na tuombe Mungu na tuhoe gai Mungu atasikia 
nikisikia aini yako igua na atatenda kitu aini yako ikodo tukifunguka macho tuone kufinyiliwa na shetani katika jamii zetu twaiguka maitho tuone gomoria hinyereire muturire witu mungu wetu atasikia aini yako igua na atatenda kitu aini yako ikodo na mambo itakuwa sawa maudo mothe ni makuagirira bwana wabariki gaya mona adhime muno ah thank you lilian Asante sana Lilian. She is the wife of my youth. Yeye ni mke wa ujana wake. Bwana atukuzwe. Mwadhani ya Osho. Tumetembea naye safari ndefu. Dite hii da inene. Ya zaidi ya miaka 30 na. Miaka 30 na. That over that years. Miaka migea kuna 30. We have walked together. Tumetembea pamoja. Tumesaidiana. Na tutaidhanetie. Na pia tunaenda hii safari ya binguni pamoja. Na netradi for matwini hamwe. Diposa ni wa maana sana nikiona wafata muno katika maisha yangu mtorere ino wako bwana asifiwe mwadhani ya Osho ah muniruhusu nige moje tikirie dakika moja kwanza ni meka na announcement eh daga the kaudu bwana asifiwe mwadhani ya Osho ah tulipewa nafasi na baba yetu ya kiroho itwa hairuona ihida ni fafa wa kiroho tumekuwa tukipanga and tuko tuto kifaga vile tutaanzisha kuna toko abereria sako ya kanisa sako ya kanisa na sako ya kanisa na sako ya kanisa ni sababu uh, our father anashughulikia mambo ya kiroho todo awa aroraga maudu ma kiroho moja na wale wachungaji wengine ambao wanatuhudumia katika madhabahu haya na hujeria matogoragia kigogone inige iki lakini kwa mambo ya kifedha no maudu ma besha hata kama iko na dimension ya kiroho unaoko ina maudu ma kiroho kuna wakati tunahitaji pesa ni tufataraga besha ikiwa na hiyo dimension ya kiroho na ikiwa ya matumishi yetu ili ana kiroho na kutumira besha hiyo kwa hivyo tumejiandaa ni tuwe haleleirie na tumeanza mpangilio ni tuabelirie mufago na siku ya leo na mudhanya wa umudhi will be our first day itakuwa siku ya kwanza ku interact na serikali ukoro tu interact na serikali juu ya huo mpango kwa mfago hii ni usio so we we'll have a meeting tuko na mshamanio ya sako members ya sako members tukimaliza uh, service tualikia service Uh, there is an officer from the government kuna ofisa wa serikali who is coming to meet with us atakaye kuja kuungana na sisi ndio atuambie vile tutaendelea kulingana na sheria nigetha turatu tukuthina mbere kulingana na watho because we must operate even a church sako ninaoginya tukorwo tukitogoria sako ya kanitha in line with the government regulations kulingana na watho wa serikali wa after service uh, baada ibada uh, wale ambao ni members aliye ni members wale tulitumia kule kwenda kwa registration aya tu ahudhirie kuandika registration a few others na gya amwe anini who have the passion who have been asking me sako itaanza lini ale makoroto makiuria sako ikabi ale have a meeting uh, kwa darasa pale tuko na mshamanio kirathi na huo office na huyo officer na officer ushio ndio atuambie na atuelekeze nigetha atuonelerie bwana atukuzwe mwandani ya gosho so please uh, tutatake wale watatoshea kwa hiyo class eh tugiyo wale amagiga na class officials na wale already registered as members na wale registered members and we can take a few more wale wanasikia hutaki ikupite na wale mara yuko matigitigo ah we can meet with them tunaweza kutana nao tutaongozwa na pastor gatu toko 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 ni pastor gatu in that meeting katika mkutano huo na together with the committee ile imekuwa ikipanga hiyo na committee ile kule tuoge toka bwana asifiwe mwadhani ya gosho sasa nataka tuingie kwa neno la Mungu ila tuoga tuingie kiwini kia gai and i want us to read the book of Matthew na tukudho maifu kulia madhayo mlango wa 13 13 kwanza tusome verse 2 44 to 46 Uh, tutasoma 44 na 44 na tutasoma zingine mingi atakuthoma ingenyige kama vile bwana atatusaidia tuliaga yako tutaidia ah uh, today i want to talk about the kingdom of god leo nataka kunena kuhusu ufalme wa mungu na ile kingdom na nena juu yake na ufalme ambao na nena juu yake because i know you know the kingdom of god to ni juu ni moyo wa thamaki wa gai and because i know you are members of the kingdom of god na kwa sababu sisi ni ni washirika wa ufalme wa mungu na mezaliwa katika ufalme wa mungu because you have been walking in the kingdom of god umekuwa mkitembea katika ufalme wa mungu there are certain issues kuna vitu kadhaa that are very critical ambavyo ni vya maana sana for the men and women of god kwa watu wa mungu who are citizens of the kingdom of god ambao ni wa raia wa ufalme wa mungu kwa hivyo tutaongea juu ya uraia wetu toko hiyo horo wa uraia wetu we are also going to talk about na tutanena juu ya what we plan to do 
kile tunapanga kufanya katika ufalme what kind of kingdom mentality mawazo ya ufalme what's best for those who are in the kingdom of god inayofanya vizuri katika watu ambao wako katika ufalme huu kwa hiyo nitakuwa ya maudu maige Mungu akitupatia nafasi the yetu hii ndio within the next 40 minutes ah dakika hii fote kumaliu tusome tudome leo tawaambia msimame sababu niwaambia mketi niko mwana mulo kama tawadimu ile muika yethi wacha roho zetu sisimame kegoro shidu shidu kame so that we read the word of god together nikaenda tudome kiyo kia gai hamwe roho zimesimama si mnajua hata wengine mahali tulitoka ah kulia to umire tulikuwa tunaambiwa tuinue roho zetu kwa bwana tuna goroshi to kwe gai hapa tutainua leo ona mudhe to to kwa baralia bwana atukuzwe madhani ya gosho the bible says biblia inasema the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field in his excitement he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field hallelujah verse 45 uh, again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on a lookout for choice pearls bwana asifiwe amen verse 46 uh, it says when he discovered a pearl of great value he sold everything he owned and bought it Hallelujah. Bwana Tusomewe kwa Kiswahili those three verses. Tena ufalme wa mbinguni umefananishwa na hazina aliyositirika katika shamba ambayo mtu alipoiona alificha na kwa furaha yake akaenda akauza alivyo navyo vyote akanunua shamba lile. Tena ufalme wa mbinguni unafanana na mfanya biashara mwenye kutafuta lulu nzuri. Naye alipoona lulu moja ya dhamani kubwa alikwenda akauza alivyo navyo vyote akainunua. Praise be to God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hear the word of God. Haba neno la Mungu and it's our Lord who was speaking about the kingdom of God. Na ni Yesu Kristo alikuwa anaenda kuhusu ufalme wa, wa mbinguni. Na Bwana akaongea mambo ya ufalme. Na niki alio roho dhamaki. Ni sababu ufalme todo dhamaki una nguvu we na hinya una mamlaka na we na uhoti una uwezo na we na uhoti una utajiri na otoga na pia una wafuasi na nikulia dia marumagirira kwa hivyo when the lord was talking about the value wakati mungu alikuwa anaenda kuhusu dhamani of the kingdom of god ya ufalme wa mbinguni he compared it aliufananisha with something of great value ya kitu cha dhamana Fast number one, he says is like a hidden treasure. Biblia inasema ni kama hazina iliyofichwa. A treasure is something of great value. Hazina ina dhamana kuu. And therefore he puts the kingdom of God na akaweka ufalme wa mbinguni as something of very great value. Kitu cha dhamana sana. And then it is in a field. Na sasa iko katika shamba and this field is not his na shamba hii sio yake it's owned by another person ni ya mtu mwingine and then we see this uh, issue of the hidden treasure na sasa wakati anaiona once it's discovered akiona anauza kila kitu akedi ile shiothe ili ainunue nigetha agure iwe kwa shamba yake itweke yake praise be to god mwadhani ya gosho he continues and says akadi nabe ya kauda it's like a great pearl ni kama lulu nzuri a great pearl lulu nzuri something of great value kitu cha dhamana sana and if you look at the people who like beauty na ukiona wale watu wanapenda urembo and the people who live very expensive lives wale wanaishi maisha ya pesa nyingi ambaye sio mbaya kuishi maisha kama hayo na tiori kuikaroguo hata sio mbaya kuwa na mali mingi na tiori kuwa na otoga muige but when you can get something of great value lakini ukipata kitu cha dhamana like ruby kama lulu ama dhahabu ama dhahabu ama diamond ama diamond there are certain small things kuna vitu kidogo called ornaments zinaitwa ornaments unakuta mtu anaweza kuwa anavaa a necklace ako na mkufu with a very small high value stone na ako na jiwe la dhamana hata akivaa onekera 
kuna mahali hawezi kwenda. Hali hadi atagilia. Sababu anajua mtu akinyakua. Todomodo wa geoya. Ni kitu ya value mingi. Ni kitu kina pesa nyingi. Anaweza kubadilisha maisha yake. Anawashejia mtolele wake. Akiwa mtu anavaa value ya kitu kama hicho. Ena kitu takiukia value ya pesa nyingi. Of God Ufalme wa mbinguni is compared to something of great value. Inafananishwa na kitu cha dhamana kuu. Na sio kitu mtu na tomodo wothe anapata nafasi akoragwa na ihida ya kuwa na hiyo hidden treasure na kugea na kitu kiu kiu maisha yake mutorele ine wake sababu todo watu wengi hawaelewi adoigi matiowe hata wakiambia kuna hidden treasure ona mero ni kule na otogamu hide wakati mwingine hawaelewi matini itaga na wakati mwingine sababu kitu ambaye hujui dhamana yake kitu kitu toe dhamana yake uwezi ukaipatia value ile ina inaipasa ndio gemenya kifatie kumadha kwa uigana and therefore na kuogua if you look at the kingdom of god ukiangalia ufalme wa mungu there are certain issues kuna vitu kadhaa we may need to understand tunafaa kuelewa about the kingdom of god kuhusu ufalme wa mungu so can act accordingly ili tufanye kulingana na mpangilio bwana atukuzwe mwanzani yagosho there are certain people of the bible kuna watu katika biblia sometimes they marvel us wanatushangaza by their actions kwa matendo yao by their reactions na matafanya kwao and by their attitude tabia yao i love like abraham napenda mtu kama abraham Wanani yagosho. And then we see Ab- na tunaona Abrahamu because he's obedient to God. Kwa sababu alikuwa na timu Mungu. And he was a heart for God. Na alikuwa na roho ya Mungu. And a promise from the Lord. Na alikuwa na kutoka kwa Mungu. When the same God wakati huyu Mungu who gave him that child and he waited for too long. Wakati alipea huyu mtoto na akagojea wakati mrefu. Na alipata huyu mtoto akiwa mzee sana. Na akigea mwana wa mudhuri mkoro. Na bibi yake akiwa mzee sana. Na mtimia wake mkoro. The same God huyu huyu Mungu. Tells Abraham anamwambia Can you sacrifice your son? Nataka unitolee mtoto Can wako kama dhabihu. Can you give me your son? Nipe mtoto wako. And Abraham being a man. Na Abraham akiwa mwanamume. Like all the men of the world. Kama wanaume wa dunia. After obeying the word of God. Baada ya kutii neno la Mungu. He decides to go and sacrifice the son. Anaamua kwenda kutoa dhabihu mtoto wake. So we see them walking. Watu naona wakitembea. They have a donkey. Wako na punda. They have servants. Na wa, na watumishi. They are carrying some wood. Na wanabeba kuni. He has a knife. Ako na kisu. Sababu sacrifice ya nyakati zile. Todo magogo na madhi koishio. Zilikuwa sacrifice ya kuchinja. Ni kwa jogo wa dejago. So you can imagine this man of God. Unaweza fikiria huyu mtu wa Mungu. I don't know what was going in his mind. Sijui ni nini nilikuwa naenda katika mawazo yake. I don't know whether he had questions to his God. Sijui kama alikuwa na maswali kwa Mungu wake. Why even you want to take? Ni kwa nini unataka kunipea na uchukue? And even if you take this one. Na ukichukua huyu. My wife may not be able to conceive again mke wangu pengine hana uwezo wa kuzaa mara tena na, na dayo ragia sasa nikienda ni sacrifice na dadi da uta mwana wako akigogona nitaenda kumwambia sara nini kudi kuera sara atia no wonder he never bothered to tell sara na nikia tamu ilile because he had a certain attitude todo alikuwa na tabia fulani for the kingdom of god ya ufalme wa mungu i look at other men of the bible naangalia watu wengine wa biblia number one moja when we look at king david tukiangalia mfalme daudi when he was bringing the ark of the covenant wakati alikuwa analeta saduku la agano From one man mahali alikuwa ameimenda ameipeana iwekwe sababu aliogopa kufa. Hali atwaleta todo ni atigirete. So the ark of God was kept in the house of Obed Odom. Ikawekwa katika nyumba ya Obed Odom. Who was a Levite? Ali, aliyekuwa mlawi. Na wakati ndio ingizwe huko, anigeza igoko huko. Ikiletwa hapo kuna watu ambao walikuwa wameibeba na wakaibeba kwa njia ambayo Bwana hakupenda. Adwalia maku ita maikuwa na ajira tagire ile. And one man of good will. Na mtu mmoja wa kutaka kusaidia. Alipona kati na anguka. Leo ni ni kwera hapo. Ark of the covenant was about to fall down. Na saduku lilikuwa karibu kuanguka. Kanyosha mkono. Akitaburukia guoko ili aiokoe isi anguke. Anyiterere tikagwe. Mungu akamustrike akamuua. Gaia kimuliga kimoraga. After David seeing 
that kind of an issue baada ya Daudi kuona God, matukio kama hayo na Mungu kama yeye achukui mambo kirahisi ndio yaga maudu wa uguo David feared Daudi agetigira akasema kwanza iwekwe kwa yule mtu ana confidence anaweza kuiweka na kigabe hiyo ni mudu uliogeo atakuiga na kwa hiyo familia ya Alawi na alimulawi and because he was a priest na kwa sababu alikuwa kuhani and he was in the lineage of priest na alikuwa katika ukoo wa who are allowed and authorized to handle walio kubalika kushughulikia na kubeba wa akakubali na ikawekwa na agetikira na akeiga na ilipowekwa ilileta mambo mazuri kwa hiyo nyumba na kwa hiyo ukige ya maudu mega nyumba lakini my focus is not there uh, malengo yangu sio hapo after david had that huyu jamaa amebarikiwa sana daudi aigwa mudu ni murathime akaamua nitaenda kuichukua na nigothi kugira na akajitayarisha kama ilivyopasa na na akihalirwe kwa gire ile na akafanya utafiti na age, na agedhudhuria inatakikana ibebwe kiaje ifatie kuwatia na tutafanya namna gani na tuikatia my only thing here which i'm looking at if you look at second samuel kiangalia kitabu cha Samuel wa 6:13 sita kumi na tatu. We see now David bringing the ark of the covenant to Jerusalem tunaona Daudi akipeleka sanduku la agano Yerusalemu to the city of God ama katika mkao ya Mungu oh it used to be called then the city of David because now David was the ruler ama mji wa Daudi kwa sababu alikuwa kiongozi took it from the Jebusite baada ya kuichukua kutoka kwa Jebusi sasa ameamua hii italetwa kwa nyumba ya Bwana Daudi anego tu aronyo baina ya Agai anataka hiyo ark iletwe katika mji wa Daudi. Alada ida aduko rudi twa ronyo baina ya Daudi. And what we see na kile tunaona because of the gratitude he had for God. Kwa sababu ya shukurani aliyokuwa nayo kwa Mungu. And because of the way his heart valued God. Na vile roho yake ilikuwa na dhamani kwa Mungu. This very same man the, the Bible says he was a man after God's heart. Biblia inasema alikuwa na roho kama ya Mungu. Sasa tunamuona akileta the presence of God tukamuona kile hii dhaduku ya Gai which was symbolized by the ark of the covenant iliyo akilishwa na sanduku la maagano the city of Jerusalem katika mji wa Yerusalemu and in the place i said second samuel chapter 6 na mahali nimesema katika samuel ya kwanza wakitembea tukamuona magedhie I don't know how far sijui ubali gani Obed Odom's house was Obed Odom ilikuwa karibu na Yerusalemu and the priests as they were carrying the ark of the covenant na makuhani walipobeba sanduku la maagano for every six steps they made kwa hatua sita walifanya assuming I'm the priest fikiria mimi ni kuhani 1 2 3 4 5 6 kwa sita waki move your distance mali distance hiyo a whole bull walikuwa wanachinja and a fattened heifer walikuwa wanachinja ikachinjwa ikadhejwa bwana atukuzwe mwadhani yagosho so assuming the the home of obed was in town ugeshi ya mushi wa obed wali town na leto hapa na yale hogoigwa ni ngombe gapi zingechinjwa ni ngombe shiga na shiga dhejwa how many fattened heifers ni ngombe shiga na so this is about the value that one attaches to his god ni kuhusu dhamana unayoshikilia mungu ambaye you don't count the cost gayolio tataraga wana atukuzwe mungu ambaye unaweza kumtendea anything gayolio gekira maudu mothe praise be to